It is so good to be with you all tonight. It is so good to see you all. So glad that you decided to make your Wednesday night here at HP Youth. It's going to be a great night. And so, like we say during announcements, lock in at this time. Don't let there be any distractions around you. Set the example to your friends of what it looks like to lean in and to listen and to be engaged during this time. I'm so excited. God's placed a word on my heart that I believe is for tonight, not any other night. And so I'm ready for him to speak in a way that only he can. And so let's get into it, all right? We're just gonna dive right into it. So we are on the second week of On Your Mark. And last week was amazing. This series has been awesome. It's been so cool to see specific encounters of people encountering Jesus in all these different ways in their life. And so tonight, tonight, don't want you to miss this. So if you're not listening, listen up right now. Tonight, the title of my message is On Your Mark, Get Set, Go To. Not go through, go to. And if you're confused, you're supposed to be. So that's why you gotta keep listening, okay? And so I have a lot of verses tonight, but I'm not gonna read all 50 of them because all of our legs would be shaking. So I'm gonna read a few. Also guys, side note, so I know you might not be able to see this, but this is a new Bible that my friend got me and it says Rachel Gonzalez on the bottom because, because in 29 days, guys we're literally almost there 29 days that's besides the point this is about Jesus right now I just had to mention that so we could all celebrate all right hey if we could stand to our feet for the reading of the word I'm just gonna be reading John 11 3 through 7 Shh. all right listen up John 11 3 through 7 it says so the sister sent word to Jesus Lord the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Okay, God. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. All right, let's pray. Jesus, we love you. God, tonight is about you. It's about nobody else but you. And so God, I pray that we would quiet our, our minds, our spirits in this moment, God, to, to be captivated by you, Jesus, that nothing else would have our attention but you, God, do what only you can do. God, we trust you and we love you and it's in your name we pray, amen. 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 All right, you can have a seat, you can have a seat. Have a seat, but no talk, have a seat. All right, so on your mark, get set, go to. You might be like, what in the world does this mean, Rachel? Well, as we get into the story, you're gonna realize where I'm going with this, but it was making me think, go to, right? When you're going to something, you're giving yourself to something or to someone. Like for instance, when you go to school, don't we all love school? I know, we all love school. Yeah, boo, yeah, I know, all the sarcasm, all the sarcasm, but hey, when you go to school, you're giving yourself to education, to write, to learn more, right? Or when you come here, when you go to church, I hope you're coming here for Jesus and to grow in your faith with him. So you go to church for Jesus or this one is just really speaks to me. I know I talk about this a lot, but when you go to Chick-fil-A to get the Lord's chicken and the sweet tea and the fries that are literally perfect in all of their ways, I'm going because I need some good fast food and Chick-fil-A is the way to go. So when you're going to something, you're giving yourself to that something or to that person. 
And so there's this story in the Bible. I just read a few verses, but instead of reading you 50 verses, because let's be honest, you would all be like checked out, I'm going to tell you the story, okay? So follow along with me as I tell it to you. It's a crazy story, guys. I was like laughing reading this. Sometimes I don't even know, like, I'm like, Jesus, what are you doing? But he knows what he's doing. And so let me share this with you. So in John 11, if you have your Bibles, or even if you have them on your phone, turn to John 11. It's about the death of a man named Lazarus. I know right now that sounds sad, but we're going to be celebrating at the end. And so in this story, there's this man named Lazarus, and he's sick. He's sick to the point where if he doesn't get help, he's, he's going to die. And so he has two sisters, Mary and Martha. And Mary and Martha know that their brother needs to be healed. It's their brother, right? Of course they, they don't want him to die. They want him to get well. And so they go to Jesus, and, and for the verses I just read, they tell him, Lord, the one you love is sick. And Jesus says to them, this sickness will not end in death, but God is actually going to be glorified through this. And they're probably like, what? No, I needed you to tell me like you were coming to heal him. And I don't even know what you're saying and glorified what? And so they're probably a little confused. And then it goes on to say that after that, Jesus actually stays where he's at for two more days. So like he's not in a rush to get to Lazarus, who he says that he loves. So he's like, this is going to be glorified so that my son may be glorified through it. I'm actually going to stay where I'm at for two more days, and then maybe I'll come to see Lazarus. And so he's not in a rush, right? And we might think, oh my gosh. I mean, how many times in our life have you been like, God, no, now, like I need you to come through now. And he's like, not yet. And we don't understand it, right? But he knows exactly what he's doing. And so two days later, he then looks at his disciple and, he, and he's like, all right, disciples, let's actually go now. Let's go. And he tells them, he says, I have a friend that is sleeping and he needs to be woken up. And the disciples are like, Jesus, if he's sleeping, like he'll just wake up when he gets better, right? Like who likes to be woken up from a nap? Nobody, I know I don't. And so they're probably like, Jesus, if he's just sleeping, we should not wake him up. He's pro then he'll be like super angry and upset with us. Like let him sleep. They didn't get it, right? They didn't get it. And so Jesus looks at them plainly and he says, no, my friend Lazarus is dead. And I'm actually glad that I wasn't there so that you can believe so he's saying, no, he's actually not alive. I need to go. I'm actually glad I wasn't there two days ago because I'm really going to be glorified in this. And so they head there, and this part is so cool to me. So I learned this as I was studying this story. So Jesus arrives on the fourth day. And you're like, what? Fourth day? No, this is significant. So I learned as I was studying this that the Jewish belief back in that day for the town of the people that were there, they believed that three days in, three days in, okay, they believed that the soul stayed close enough to the grave that it still, there was hope of it possibly entering back into the body so that the person could come back to life. But... On the fourth day, they accepted that four days or beyond, there was no hope for resurrection. And when does Jesus come? He comes on the fourth day when there's no hope. In these people's minds, there's no hope. And even for you in this place, maybe you're like, it's been past four days for me. I feel like I am at the end of myself. There's no hope. And Jesus is like, you just wait. There's hope in my name when I show up to the scene. And maybe he hasn't showed up yet. But when he shows up, things change. And so these people, they're hopeless they're grieving, they're heartbroken. It's been four days, there's no way Lazarus is gonna come back. And so Mary, or not Mary, Martha, one of the sisters, she hears that Jesus is coming and so Martha runs out to Jesus. And she says, teacher, if only you would have been here a few days earlier. 
my brother wouldn't be dead. And Jesus' his response is, your brother's going to rise again. Like, what? Like, what do you mean? Like, I literally just told you, like, he's gone, Jesus. I needed you to be here two days ago. And he's like, no, he's going to rise again. And it's how many of us in this place, or maybe you, you don't know anybody like this, but I know for me it's like, God, if only you wouldn't have shown up a few days ago, my family wouldn't be like this right now. I wouldn't be dealing with this in my friendships. I wouldn't be going through heartbreak in this relationship. And God's like, no, I'm here now, and there's hope in me, and I can do what only I can do. And so Mary, Martha's out. Mary did not leave her her room. Mary was so sad And she was so heartbroken that because she was so sad, she literally couldn't even move. How many of us have been in that place where we're so paralyzed by sadness, fear, shame, heartbreak, that we don't even feel like we can move? That's how Mary was feeling. And so Martha, she's talking to Jesus and She's like, no, yeah, I believe my brother, you know, he'll raise, he'll rise again in the resurrection of the last day. And Jesus looks at her and he says, no, I am the resurrection. You don't have to wait until the resurrection on the last day when the resurrection is here and we can make it happen right now. And so it's, it only gets better. And so Martha runs to her sister And she says, Mary, the teacher, the teacher is here and he's asking for you. So Jesus is saying, Mary needs to come here. She needs to come here now. And so Mary goes to Jesus right whenever she hears. And what does she do? She falls down, Jesus, if only you would have been here. And at this point, I would have been so annoyed, like, oh my word, but Jesus, thank God, he is above us. And so he was patient and compassionate, and he actually understood their heartache and their grieving. And he says, where is Lazarus? Where is he? So they take him to the tomb, and Jesus says, roll away the stone. And then Martha's like, Jesus, it's been four days. He probably smells so bad, like his body odor. It literally says that in the Bible. I'm not making that up. She's like, his body odor? Like, and Jesus is like, did I not tell you to believe? Like, come on. <laughs> and so he still didn't give up. He still persevered after, you know, they're making all their silly comments. And so he looks at Lazarus. He's dead in the tomb. And he says, Lazarus, come out. And right away, Lazarus rises up and Jesus says to him, take off your grave clothes and let him go. Come on, somebody. He said, whenever you've experienced and you've gone from death to life, you can't stay in your grave clothes. You can't stay in your old life. You can't live the same way you used to live. You can't hang with the people that you used to hang with because you're a new creation. Y'all. Jesus, he is the resurrection and he's in this room with us right now. And so because of that, all things are possible. But this is the thing. This story isn't actually really about Lazarus. We read it and we're like, oh, Lazarus, Lazarus, which yes, Lazarus God resurrected him. Praise God. We celebrate that. It's not about him. I mean, to be fair, like, he's dead the whole time. It's not fully about Lazarus. This story is actually a lot about Mary and what Mary experiences through the resurrection. And so I want to talk about that tonight. I want to talk about Mary and what she experienced through the death and resurrection of her very own brother. And so we read that Martha in this passage, she's talking about Jesus as teacher. She's saying, Mary, the teacher is here to see you. And so at this point in time in Mary's life, 
she saw Jesus as teacher. And whenever saw, someone saw Jesus as teacher, it means that they, they've interacted with Jesus. You know, they know Jesus, they've talked with him, but they don't fully have faith in him, know who he is, or fully know everything he's about. And it actually says in a book, before we even read in John in the book of Luke, Mary is actually, she, she had already interacted with Jesus before this. And in the interaction that she has with Jesus in the book of Luke, she's sitting at his feet and Jesus is teaching her. And so Mary is a student. And so Mary only knew how to be a student of Jesus and how to see him as teacher. But she needed to see him as more. She needed to see him as Lord of her life, the one who is the ruler of all things, and not just to bring him in to her life whenever she needed to be learned about something, but to bring him into every single part of her life. But Mary hasn't gotten there yet. He's just teacher, and she's just a student. And so how many of us in this place we don't actually fully see Jesus for all that he is and all who he is. We think Jesus is just, oh, he's the guy I think of on Wednesdays. And I come in here, I come in here, whoa, it's all good. It's all good. Hope everything's okay. It's all good. Okay, fix your eyes back up here. We're good. We're good. We're good. So, this is, and so how many of you think, nope, Jesus is just a check on the box on a Wednesday or on a Sunday, and then the rest of my week, I honestly don't even really think about him. I don't need him. I'm good. Or maybe you're like, no, Jesus is just someone that I only think about when I'm praying or when I'm worshiping or when I'm reading my Bible. But other than that, he's not really a part of my life. Like, how do you see Jesus truly? How do you think of him what comes to mind, is he just a part of your life or is he your whole life? Because if he's just a part and he's not your whole life, you're never going to get to experience him for who he fully is. And Mary wasn't at a place yet where she could experience Jesus for who he fully was. And so there's a tension in that, a struggle in that, right? But this is the really, really cool thing. Some of you in here, you're grieving. Your heart's broken. You're sad. You're confused. You're sitting in shame. You're letting fear hold you back from walking into who God's made you to be. You're held back by people's opinions of you, what people may think about you if you went all in with Jesus. You're worried, no, he's just a Wednesday thing. If I was like to talk about him all throughout the week and share him with my friends, which is what we're supposed to do, but I'm not gonna do it because I'm way too fearful of what people think about me. I don't wanna be rejected by those people. Like, I want them to like me. And I say this because I've been there. Like, you're not alone in that. It's not how we're called to live. But some of you, you're sitting in it and you feel like Mary where you don't even feel like you can move forward because you're stuck in whatever it may be and you feel like I can't even move. I can't even move. And I love in verse 28 when Martha says to Mary, the teacher is asking for you and he's telling you to come here. And tonight, Jesus is telling you to come here. He's telling you, you don't need to sit in your brokenness anymore. You don't need to sit in shame, in fear. Come to me. And where did Mary go? Mary goes to Jesus. She goes to Jesus because can I tell you, Jesus knows, even if you don't know, he is what you need. 
You don't need more validation from people. You don't need more people to hype you up on your Instagram comments. You don't need people to praise you for your achievements. You need Jesus. And you need him not to just be a part, but all of your life. Who are you going to? What are you going to? Are you going to people that can make you feel good in the moment, but actually don't tell you the truth and make you better? Are you going to TikTok and Instagram to scroll mindlessly, to feel good for five minutes, but then feel empty getting off? Who are you going to? Because can I tell you that I've gone to things that aren't Jesus, and it's never left me feeling better or more whole or satisfied than Jesus. And so Mary, Jesus says, come here. He's telling you tonight, come here. Get out of what you've been in and come to me. And Mary, she goes to him, but she still, she still is like, Jesus, why? Right? Teacher, why? She doesn't realize who he fully is. But then, when she sees what he does, he doesn't just know of resurrection, right? He is the resurrection. She watches him four days, no hope, and she says, Lazarus, come out. And Mary's a witness of that. And so, y'all, y'all, this, this is amazing. John 11 is where we read about the death of Lazarus. In John 12, Literally a page, a page over. That was a lot. I don't know why I did that. John 11, John 12. We read, listen to this, and we'll make sense of it if you're like, what in the world? Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Listen to this. Then Mary, she took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. If you're like, what, do, what is she doing? She is not just seeing Jesus as teacher anymore. She's seeing him as Lord. And she's not just a student anymore, but she's a worshiper of the Lord that she knows and that she's met. So many of you in this place, we had over 150 students get baptized last year, and more of you are gonna get baptized this year, even if you don't know it. How many of you are living as Jesus' Lord? You've witnessed what he's done in your life. How are you sharing that with your peers that are in here and aren't in here yet? Because Mary couldn't help. Mary couldn't help but take the most precious and expensive thing she had and pour it on the feet of Jesus. Because when you've not only experienced him as a one time, a one week thing, just as a teacher that you learn knowledge from, but you know him as Lord, the one who has redeemed you and saved you and called you and created you, you can't help but worship him. And this is why, HP Youth, we love worship here. And this is why, if you talk, we tell you to stop. Because we know who's in this place, and we know that he's worthy of our worship. And so we're not going to get distracted. We're not going to let people keep us from a moment with Jesus. He wants you to show him your devotion. When we worship, nothing else matters but him. And can I tell you that maybe you haven't seen the resurrection yet, but you can still worship. And when you don't know what to do, worship him in the midst of the unknown, even when you don't know. Some of you, a lot of you in here, 
You're the only person in your house that goes to church. You're the only person that is following Jesus. Keep worshiping him. Worshiping on the behalf of your family that doesn't know him yet and believing, believing that God in just his right timing, he's gonna show up to the scene and he's gonna do what only he can do. And so in this place, in this place, maybe you don't have perfume, okay? Can I tell you, I don't have a lot of perfume. And so you're like, okay, Rachel, great, but like I don't have perfume to like pour out. And, and so can I tell you, okay, you don't have perfume. Let me give you a few other options. Way you can worship is with your voice. When we're in here and we, and we see lyrics on the screen, you sing them and you declare them over your life in worship. You have your hands and your feet to come into this place to serve, to live on mission, to not just show up to cruise, but to be a battleship and live on mission. Can I tell you, students, you're capable of that. This isn't just a job for the leaders in here. We wanna see you activated in your worship to Jesus through serving with your hands and with your feet. And so we're not just gonna dismiss and go into a moment tonight like we usually do. We're gonna go back into a song. And I know that y'all know this song. And when we sing this, we're singing this as people who have known Jesus as Lord. And he's not just a part of your life. Can I tell you, I never want Jesus to just be a part of me. I want him to be all of me on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, because he is Lord and he deserves it. And so when we sing this, y'all listen up. I don't see all of you looking at me. This isn't meant to be taken lightly. And it's not because I'm saying it, it's because Jesus is in here. When we sing, we sing to a God who knows your story, who knows exactly what you're going through, who knows your insecurities, who knows your struggles, and he wants to meet you. That's who we're singing to. He is Lord of all and he's the most worthy. And so I want you to stand in this place. And you know what, ultimately, I can't force you, right? It's up to you if you wanna lean in or not. I can't force you. You can let this pass by or you can choose to let this be a moment of you, with you and Jesus. So can we close our eyes, lift our hands, posture our hearts in this moment? Let's worship him like the God and the Lord he is in this place. Come on, HPY.